Our whole universe was in Hello, I'm Sheldon. From the Big Bang Theory, of course. Did you know that Mike's Daily Podcast is completely independently created and produced? Of course you didn't, because you're not as smart as I am, or nor have you won as many Emmys. Did you know that just about every podcast you listen to is part of a huge network, corporation, or just simply lifted off of a radio station? What drollness that is. Did you know that big-name podcast players like iTunes and Stitcher show only podcasts that pay for advertising or have big names that have been on TV or film? I watch neither, especially Doctor Who. I hate that show. Please do what you can to support independent podcasters like Mike. He seems like an all-right guy, although he's not as smart as I am. No one is as smart as I am or as dumb as he. Now, Mike's Daily Podcast. This show is clean, pretty much. (laughs) Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 815. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on Earth, located somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California. Today, part three of my intern interview with the Seattle band Lowlands and Tom Roram, plus... We hear from Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, and John Deere the Engineer. And when I die, I will live on on Facebook, which is another way of saying I am going to hell. Mike's Daily Podcast. We find out more about that on this show today. There is so much to tell. Mike's Daily Podcast. No, so I am bald. Now I wish that when I was younger I had a high top fade. My hair was kind of curly. Hey, do you like my hot face that you see on Mike's Daily Podcast in the podcast pictures? Rude dog park people. They annoy me. But I love long, short beagles. They're really cool. And they've got such innocent faces. Mike's Daily Podcast. When they stare at you and go, Where's my best friend Woodstock, that little bird? I Mike's love Daily Charlie Brown Podcast. And then there was, yeah! on the last show, Madame Rutabaga tried to uh, fix me up with Haley Atwell. Love her, too. The lovely, lovely, who is Agent Carter. On the show, Agent Carter, look who just walked in. Hello, my God, it's Sally Stewart, job supervisor. Oh, my gosh, Charlie Brown was, like, such a great cartoon. It was. And, you know, it, oh, it pops up into our lives a couple times a year with the different holiday specials that they made. Charles Schulz lives on. And he's got like a bunch of statuettes of his characters up in Santa Rosa when you go up north past Marin County and all that. And it's cool. It's a little place in California. I know he had something to do with St. Paul, Minnesota as well. So he is involved somehow with a lot of cities that have saints in their names. Santa Rosa, St. Paul, that kind of thing. Shelly, wake up! Oh my god, Mike Matthews, I look so sorry, I fell asleep. Uh huh. Look who else just walked in. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floor Man! And this is John Deere, the engineer. Mike, I don't think I can imagine you with a high top fade. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, my hair was pretty curly, but the, the worst thing I ever did with my curly hair when I had hair was I had like a fro mullet. Kind of like, uh, what's his name? James Cameron. Kurt Cameron. Kurt Cameron. Chris Cameron. The He's a big Jesus fan now. He does the Back to the Future. I mean, uh, Left Behind. <laughs> yeah, that thing. He was, of course, on Growing Pains. Do you remember that? John Deere, the engineer? Yes, Mike, I do. Our voices sound very similar right now. They do, Mike Matthews. The only difference is I sound more intelligent. Yeah. Well, you know, a brick would sound more intelligent than me. Actually, bricks are pretty smart. They're heavy. They're heavy. They're... Isn't that another way of saying you're smart? Heavy? Have I completely lost all of you? Mike Matthews, what were you talking to me? I was sleeping. Uh-huh. Long, short beagles... Uh, I don't know. Have you ever, have you, do you have a beagle? Beagles are amazing. They're great hunting dogs. They're, they're just funny to look at. I love them. 
I saw him all over yesterday at Point Isabel, which you can see a picture of at mikesdailypodcast.com. It's the podcast picture. And yeah, they they just love to walk around. And my boxer dog, Basil, loves playing with them. It's just great. All these dogs walking around Point Isabel. They're completely free and loose and running around. And it's great, except for when your dog gets attacked by some strange husky mix. I mean, this, this dog couldn't... It couldn't have been a husky. The person that was with me said it was a husky, but it was much too big to be a husky. It was like cujo size husky. And this dog showed its teeth at Basil and then started coming at Basil, and Basil, like, defended his ground, my boxer. And next thing I know, the two dogs are barking in each other's faces, and finally that dog went away. And I found out later that from a bunch of people at Point Isabel that this dog had been picking on other people's dogs. That's not right. The Point Isabel is a fantastic place with a great view of the Golden Gate Bridge, Mount Tamal Pais, and... Am I saying that name wrong, Basil? <laughs> I probably am. It, it's to be ruined by aggressive dogs like that is just annoying. But I guess it's part of life at a dog park. You know what? Part of life is death. And part of death now in today's world is that you leave behind a Facebook that goes on long after you're dead. And now Facebook is making it easier for you to plan your online afterlife. This according to the Associated Press. The world's biggest online social network said that today that it will now let users pick someone who can manage their account after they die. Previously, the accounts were memorialized after death or locked so that no one could log in. But Facebook says its users wanted more choice. Beginning in the U.S., Facebook users can now pick a legacy contact to post on their page after they die, respond to a new friend requests, and update their profile picture and cover photo. Users can also have their accounts deleted after their death, which was not possible before. If you want someone to manage your account after you die, you have to click on that upside-down triangle on the right-hand corner of your page and find security settings. And for... Us, there will be an option here in the U.S. to edit your legacy contact who must be a Facebook user. But you don't have to pick someone else to manage your account. You can also check a box to permanently delete your account when you die. However, the person you choose to manage your account won't be notified of your choice until your Facebook account is memorialized. But you can choose to send them a message right away. Accounts are memorialized at the request of loved ones who must provide proof of the person's death, such as an obituary. Facebook tries to ensure that the account of the dead user doesn't show up as a suggested friend or in other ways that could upset the person's loved ones. Facebook, which is nearly 1.4 billion users, won't say how many accounts are memorialized, though their product manager, Vanessa Carl... That's really her name. You have to pronounce it like that. Or it could be pronounced Callison Birch with a hyphen in between. Said there have been hundreds of thousands of requests from loved ones to do so, to uh, memorialize the account. And yeah, I, I don't know if you've known anyone that had their accounts memorialized who have passed away. Uh, people will post on that person's birthday. They'll post something on that page and talk about, you know, how much they miss them. And it's, it's kind of nice because people will post stories and other people uh, can then, you know, talk to each other, converse with each other. Also is a way a lot of people use to put together an actual uh, memorial, an actual get together where they remember that person. What do you think about all that? Email me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. What do you think about dog parks? What do you think about high top fades? What do you think? What do you think about beagles? Email me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email. Also, email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. And go to the website, Mike's Daily Podcast.com with links to where to listen to the show in iTunes. Comment on the show and rate the show. If you do that, more people find out about us. As you heard at the beginning of the show, 
Big Bang Theory guy was talking about how we just, as an independent podcast, we don't get any publicity. I don't put any money into advertising, and because of that, iTunes doesn't show me. Neither does Stitcher. So if you can, promote this show in whatever way you can. A great way to do that is on your Facebook page. Like my Facebook page, and when I post a new show, share it with your friends and more people find out about us that way. And uh, we're not um, memorialized yet, so it's good to promote us while we're still around. Uh, Also, we are on YouTube, SoundCloud's TuneIn. If you have the TuneIn app, you can find us on there. We are on Podomatic, Mixcloud, Spreaker, and yes, Stitcher. And you can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Yelp, Tumblr, all those links at mikesdailypodcast.com. And the Amazon link, if you buy anything through Amazon, go through that and buy something that helps support the show and it doesn't change the way you shop. You can also find the blog, the daily podcast picture, and all my past interviews are at mikesdailypodcast.com. And speaking of interviews... Into an interview. Great. We're speaking with Tom Roram of the band Lowlands from Seattle. The, is that where the name came from? Are there like Lowlands in Seattle? I don't there know. are Lowlands in Seattle, but not necessarily, not really where the 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 um, the name came from. No, no, but, no. What what the name come from? Uh, I don't know. This is kind of a personal question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, it, uh, I so touched I, a nerve. Like I said before, I started the band with a friend of mine from school. His name is Joel, and we at the time when we were starting the band, we were trying to come up with a name, and we were really obsessed with this one song by is it gillian welch or gillian welch gillian welch um i say gillian but you can say gillian or tomato i've heard it i've heard it both ways anyway gillian welch yeah and uh and dave rollins and it's called um it's called in the lowlands and Uh we just loved it and uh we covered it and we were trying to figure out a name like why don't we just call ourselves lowlands and like great that's uh, let's do it and that's kind of stuck from there ah okay well yeah she's an amazing artist huh yeah oh man she's and, the best and you really love music i i love your throwback album editions how did that where did that get started yeah i because i was trying to think of something that could be fun to do as a band um just to keep posting stuff to our website and uh, the throwback Thursday thing, like on Facebook and on Twitter, I think is, is really fun. And you can see, you know, people throw up pictures of themselves and their kids. And I always thought it'd be interesting to, as musicians, to, to talk about music that you used to be into or that were, you know, was impactful in some way or that you listened to as a kid or, you know, what, in whatever reason. So that's kind of where it spawned. So I started, I was like, I'm going to do this. I want to try and do it on a regular basis. And I'd love to have the band contribute. You know, and everyone was like, yeah, let's do it. So uh, it's been a lot of fun and been a, been a lot of fun to like look back at some of the music that we listen to. And, I, and I've got a few few albums up my sleeve that were that I'm going to write about that are going to be a, probably a little out of left field. But I think it'll be good. <laughs> what was the, the latest one is like a Jackson Brown album. Yeah. It? And that actually we um, I asked uh, the one of the one of the bands that we're uh, playing with for our CD release, Nick Foster. He, um, I asked him to do it, so uh, oh. he did a guest post for us, which is fun. Oh. And so that's what I'm also going to try and do is get guest friends posts. of mine who are also musicians to talk about albums that they really like. Oh, cool! And I saw the Dave Matthews Band mm-hmm. album. Yeah, <laughs> the, uh, I forget the name of that one. What is that? It has I I eat too much. Yeah, yeah. To... The it's called Crash, um, the oh, album, and okay. um, too much is one of the songs. Yeah, that man, I love that album when it came out. Yeah, it's got it definitely got played a lot in my car. <laughs> yeah, I was a Dave Matthews nerd. Well, well, we share the same last name. Only yeah, he, he's way yeah. more talented. He's amazing. But uh, you have this great song called "Hands and Feet" on mm-hmm. the album the whale and i wanted to play it right now and i love the the shoe la la's mm-hmm. and, and the piano on mm-hmm. this very cool and and how did this one come to be yeah i was talking to my wife one night about uh because i was you know trying to write some more music and um we, i was saying like man like most of our songs are kind of depressing like we've got a lot of depressing songs and i was like i feel like i just need to write a somewhat 
happy, upbeat song. And so uh, I wrote this song, and uh, it's totally different from most of the stuff that we play, but I feel like it still fits with our vibe. But I basically just was like, I want to write a really great rock and roll song. That's all I want to do. Ah, well, it works. It's it's a great song. Let's play it now. And it's on the um The Whale. And you can find out more about Lowlands at their website, wearelowlands.com. They're at lowlands.bandcamp.com and on Facebook at Lowland Music. So it's Tom Roram and Lowlands with hands and feet. I am in my announcer voice now. <laughs> wow. Because I'm playing a cool, upbeat song on Mike's Daily Podcast. Hands and feet, that is Lowlands, as we go outside of the last place on Earth where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast, somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California. Tomorrow, the finale of my Into an Interview with Tom Roram of Lowlands. And here's today's podcast picture. The picture is me there at Point Isabel. You can see kind of in the background, although it's really far away, San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge. And I am standing there, or sitting, squatting, actually, with the two dogs. I got Basil the Boxer, and then another boxer that I found named Angie, that Kathy was walking. I was walking with Kathy, talking to her about what it's like to own a boxer and the fun and joy they can bring you. And I was actually walking with her when that husky came along and decided to be all muchismo and, and annoying. But that picture there at mikesdailypodcast.com. 
back with you. I really apologize for my narcolepsy on today's show. I just haven't been sleeping well lately. Oh, okay. Is it why? Why is that? I've been watching. I guess John Mayer was hosting the Late Late Show for a while, and like I, I was watching that, and it was causing me not to sleep very well. It, I thought you had a thing for John Mayer. I know, like I do, but like sometimes he like scares me. Now, if you watch Big Bang Theory, do you have nightmares? No, I have hot dreams with Jaldon. Ah, and you know he introed the show today. He did? Oh my god, did I miss it? You're probably sleeping. Dang it. Dang my knock on a pain. Yeah, Sheldon's cool. Next show, the finale of my interview with the band uh, Lowlands. And then we will also hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. Wait, Mike! What is it, Floyd? I didn't get to say anything on today's show! You had this whole script written for me to say something! I was gonna say this! Alright, go ahead, Floyd. Um, wow! Haley Atwell is sure hot! Mike, I think she'd be a perfect match for you! Because I'm Floyd the Floor Man! Really, Mike? This is what you wrote for me? Well, you know, it's worth a shot. Mike, I'm afraid you have no shot at all with Haley at well. Oh, okay. I stand corrected. Mike's TV Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikestvpodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikestvpodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye!